and I will move um, that ought to pass as amended with the amendment um, as, that I've just presented, dated 3-6-2018. And um, if there are any questions with the details, we can look at them at, at amendment uh, review. That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by uh, Representative Terry. Further discussion on the motion, Represent Senator Shinnett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to say that um, I really do appreciate um, the good bipartisan work um, of the people around this horseshoe in the committee. Um, I think the bill that we're ending up with um, increases accountability and protections for taxpayers, which I think is critically important uh, in addition to recognizing the stated goal. Um, that being said, um, for me, I like to operate on a basis of, of facts and data. I don't think I would be doing my due diligence if I didn't do that as a legislator. Um, and to me, I still have not had answers to my questions that I've asked numerous times of the company relating to basic financial information. Um, and moreover, if, a, if your parent company is making $3 billion in profits, you're not the one who needs a tax break. Um, and I have some very, I have very uncomfortable uh, moving in that direction to provide a taxpayer handout to a company that can afford it. Um, they have not clearly demonstrated a financial need, and part of it is the lack of transparency around their financials. You provide those financials, you provide that transparency, then we can operate on a basis of where the facts are. We have not been able to operate on where the facts are. And so for those reasons, I will be voting against the pending motion. Further discussion on the motion, Representative Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would echo uh, the uh, remarks of the uh, Senator. Um, I think that this is the best bill that we could come up with, um, uh, working very hard uh, if we decide to um, uh, renew this tax incentive. Um, after listening to weeks of uh, testimony and um, asking many questions, I am still not convinced that this $60 million infusion of taxpayer money is necessary or advisable at this time. It is both too little and too much. It's too little because no compelling case has been made that BIW uh, needs it at this time. That's not to say that there won't come a time in the future when a more compelling case can be made, as it was 20 years ago, when there was no question that BIW was in need of modernization that required a great deal of investment. And I think the decision to go forward with a tax incentive at that time uh, was well supported. But we've heard nothing of the sort in this <coughs> round. What all we've heard is that we need it in order to remain competitive. Well, that's a pretty slippery idea. Uh, and I believe that BIW is competitive now. And it's competitive because of the quality of its workers. When I worked um, uh, for Congressman Tom Allen, we were uh, engaged in the fight to save uh, the Portsmouth Naval Air, uh, excuse me, Portsmouth um, Submarine Base. And um, the BRAC Commission wanted to close that uh, shipyard. But the committee became convinced that Portsmouth was the gold standard for the work they did on, on submarines. And that's why it's open today. I think BIW is also the gold standard. And that is because of investment, but it's also because of the work ethic of, the, of its workers and the uh, training that uh, they've gone through uh, to, to maintain their skills and keep up with modern technology. That is what you're going to win or lose on. Um, $60 million, we cannot compete with Mississippi. Mississippi is a bigger state, and it's also dirt poor. 
we, they spend their money on incentives instead of education, instead of roads, instead of all the things that make Maine the place that we want to live. And I just don't want that to happen to our state. We have to, we have to approach this question with the idea of where our priorities are. And $60 million can go a long way to making a better education system and a whole lot of other things. Now, if you come here five years from now and say, we don't have enough work to keep, to keep going, well, then I'll, well, I won't be here. But the next legislature will approach it with an open mind. And, that's, and, and you can make your case at that point. <clears throat> The other th reason I, I think that uh, you, are, you remain competitive is simply because uh, the federal government would be placed in an untenable position if it only had to rely on Ingalls. We know from recent history that when that uh, shipyard was shut down because of a, uh, two hurricanes that struck in the Gulf Coast, that uh, for weeks they were out of business, maybe months. Um, and if BIW hadn't been able to pick up the slack, uh, the United States would have been uh, really in a national security crisis. So we, we have to, the, the federal government has to keep an eye on uh, award, making awards based on keeping both shipyards viable. And I say it's too little because $60 million isn't going to make or break whether or not you're competitive. And it's too much because we can't afford it. People have said that it's a sh making this gesture is, shows that the state has skin in the game. Well, to me, that is a symbolic move. It, it's not enough to get you the contract. It just shows that Maine cares. Well, Maine cares in a lot of ways. We care by having a good educational system which feeds workers to BIW and other highly skilled uh, places to work. It, 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 it builds an education system in, up through the uh, college level. Um, and, and, and it helps with financing and a whole lot of other things. So our state is behind you. And we certainly don't want to see BIW fail. And I don't think it will. We just can't afford to pay for symbols. Um, so while I expect this bill will pass, and I commend the committee for making it the best possible bill, I will reluctantly vote against it. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, I'd just like to take a moment to speak about, about two issues. Um, we don't often get a chance to wrap up this kind of way um, with uh, such a large audience of citizens. Um, and I want to say that this committee has worked very hard in the last several sessions to make tax policy better. This book, this very thick book, represents all of the tax expenditures, the credits that this state gives. The amount of money represented here is greater than our entire state budget. So this committee is working very, very hard to make sure that the expenditures in here meet the needs and purposes for which they were intended, and that we can research and understand clearly what those expenditures are. So that's one of the reasons why we spent so much time on this credit and designing it carefully so we can assess that it's working to help keep jobs in Bath, Maine. Um, the other issue that I want to address very briefly is that I think there's been some conversation here that presents us with false choices. I believe that this state has enough money to fund carefully chosen social programs as well as effective economic development programs. I believe that we can do both. And so I will be voting in favor of this. Rep Representative Grant. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Through these gates walk the best shipbuilders in the world. That's what it says down there on the gate that these employees walk through. Well, some of their hair is turning gray, just like mine. And we are facing a demographic cliff in our state. And in recognition of that, I'm supporting this tax credit because we need to assist all of our employers, but certainly one with such a specialized workforce, with specialized skills, both uh, engineering, design, building, welding, all of those skills specific to the shipbuilding industry that has been such an important part of our heritage in the state of Maine. For me, that's why this tax credit is important. That's why I'm going to vote for it here. And I'm going to encourage my colleagues upstairs to do the same. We have to have some state investment in this most important sector of our economic development and, and our future. Thank you. Further discussion? <laughs> Representative Tip, uh, Tipping. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, I, I think we we, uh, we could have done things differently from the beginning. I think the first thing we could have done is uh, sit down, you and I, Mr. Chair, and wrote a letter to the Mississippi legislature saying, uh, if you put down your tax credits, we'll put down ours. Uh, you know, I was talking to Representative Terry about this, um, you know, just like we have discussions about TIFs, just like we have discussions about uh, economic development tools that's, that uh, inspire the, the worst types of policy, that inspire uh, a race to the bottom, um, it is very difficult to break our addiction to those unless we um, shut them off entirely. Um, that is why I, I am extremely uncomfortable you know, uh, moving forward with a, a long-term bill but at the same time, when I came to the table here, I, you know, we all have the choice to engage, to try and make policy better, or to uh, wash our hands of it. And um, I, I chose to try and make the bill the best it possibly can be. Um, and I just also want to, you know, thank Representative Grant for chasing down a lot of those details. Uh, there are pieces in this bill that I hope make it into future tax expenditure legislation. Uh, I think tying this more to jobs than uh, any previous tax expenditure we have, uh, constant accounting, uh, meaningful report backs, uh, good metrics to tell if we're actually doing what we want to do, and clearly laying out what it is we want to do. These are pieces that have all been missing for decades from Maine tax policy, and I, I hope this is a continuation uh, in the direction of, of righting that wrong and making sure that the, the state is held more accountable when it considers this policy. Uh, because a lot of the changes I've asked for Almost all of them have been made. Um, I'll, I'll be supporting the bill, but I have serious reservations. Uh, and I, if anyone out there does have a solution to fully getting out of the race to the bottom approach that we find ourselves in again and again and again, I'm all ears. Thank you, Senator. Having worked 43 years in a manufacturing outfit that had 5,000 employees back in 1985. I will be supporting this because back in 1985, I've seen a company that was dismantled by different ownerships and by lack of investments. And lack of investments really hurt where I work because they put no money in it for 30 years. And I can talk about the whole paper industry that we should have been doing something like this 30 years ago for the paper industry, and maybe we would have had the 10,000 jobs that we've lost. But investment is the key here, because without investment, you have no jobs. And I'll say one thing, where I worked, we were well paid. Bath Iron work workers are well paid. And that being well paid goes out in the communities where these people live and make our communities stronger. Same thing where I come from. When I go home this weekend, I'll see a little bit more of where I work being torn apart. Torn apart. And I'll tell you what, by seeing what we had and where we are today, 
I tell you, I'm an old man. And most of the people now are old men. And we've lost our youth. When you lose your youth, you've lost a lot. You people like me on Social Security or whatever are trying to pay the payments for the property taxes and everything else that goes along with that. And, and to me, this is a, an investment. Investment in the workers for the state of Maine. Because I'll tell you, without the workers, we have nothing. Without investment, we have nothing. So I will be supporting this because I think it's something that we as a state should be doing more of. The more investment that we make in these industries that are commonplace, that provide good paying jobs in this state, we ought to be doing more things to help them out. And I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but I'll tell you what. You want to work 43 years for an outfit, get ready to retire, with about five or six years left, and find out you don't have a job the next day. And I'll tell you what, you're not walking across the street in Mohawk at Maine to go find a job that's going to pay you and give you the benefits that you have. So with that, I think this is a good investment because I'll tell you why, it's going to help all the communities that are associated with this because you 5,000 people, that's a lot of jobs, that's spread out across a big region of the state, and I'll tell you what, people making $50,000 or more a year, mostly people do probably, and they spend it, a lot of it, within their local communities or in their service center, and I'll tell you what, that's what makes Maine strong. Any further discussion? I want to thank uh, Representative Grant for Reminding the people about gray hair, I just wish I had a little bit more of it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think lost in the discussion was the fact that uh, $200 million is going to get invested in this uh, community so that uh, we, can, we ought to drop some of the credits, uh, like you say, Representative Ryan, if we can just get... Uh, someone to help pay the five million dollar property tax, which is going to go up. Bath is the winner with this, because half of that money is going to be equipment that gets taxed. So uh, they're going to they're going to make out all right. But uh, uh, in lost in the discussion a lot of times was this uh, two hundred million that's possible that's going to get invested in the community, and that's always a win-win situation and. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has any further comment. If not, I'll, uh, I guess we're ready to vote on the bill as amended. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, and the minority report is? Ought not to pass. Ought not to pass. Anything else, Julie? Yes, sure. Yeah, Representative Tipping. Uh, we have a public hearing scheduled for Thursday. I think it's all. Yes, we do. But canceled. They've been canceled. Uh, it's it's all but I, we're, I think we're hearing for the official word later oh, today. Okay. But. I haven't heard the official word yet. There there have yeah, certainly been uh, thoughts of that. Uh, yeah, okay. We should so, have a backup date for yes. the yeah. public hearing. Uh, I was going I to ask you about next that. Tuesday. <laughs> I did too. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think we could, but uh, I don't know if we're going to. Anything further, Julie? No. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.